Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm painting Painter's Library and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Chardonnay. And if you enjoy this video, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Mars Black, Burnt Umber, which I'll call Brown, Burnt Sienna, which I'll call Rust, Deep Yellow, Titanium White, Green Oxide, Fire Red, and Cobalt Blue. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using a white piece of chalk for a sketch later on down the road. And then I'm going to be using three brushes today. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, then I have a quarter inch flat synthetic brush, and then I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up too as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint that I'm using and all the good stuff in between. So that's there um, for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are painting our wall. I'm gonna be using a large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using black paint only. So I'm gonna have a big area for the wall behind my books. Um, I'm gonna be bringing my wall down about three quarters of the way. So how, to, how, to, how you can determine where that is, is I'm gonna put a little bit of black paint on my brush. I'm gonna visually kind of just pick a halfway point and then I'm gonna go about halfway between here and the bottom of my canvas, make myself a little bit of a marker. Then I can use my brush as a measuring tool, measure it with my finger, and then go over to the other side and make myself a mark at about the same height. They don't need to be exactly the same height, but somewhere in the same vicinity. And then I'm just gonna paint the entire upper portion with black paint. So you might find that you want to um, use a different color. Maybe you want to do a gray wall or a white wall or whatever color you choose to use is totally fine. You can even paint along the edges of your canvas, the top and the side edges if you wanted to have a nice professional look. But all I'm doing is I'm going to be painting it in a left to right brush stroke so I have a nice even and consistent um, paint coverage throughout that particular area. So as you're doing it, if you do want it to be um, consistent and have a, a nice flat kind of background, you just want to make sure that you're using the same brush stroke throughout the entire area. And depending on the type of paint that you're using, maybe yours is a thinner body or a thicker body paint than mine, you might find that you don't get a great coverage on the first um, layer. So if you wanted to, you could certainly add a second layer. You would just let your um, paint dry and then just come in for a second layer if you wanted to have a nice perfect flat background. Um, you might also find that the I'm using a very firm bristle brush, so if you're using the same kind of brush that I'm using, you might detect brush stroke marks throughout your painting, which is okay by me, but if you 
don't like the appearance of that, definitely just let it dry and do a second coat on top of it. And that will eliminate those almost like scratchy type um, marks that you that can appear from a bristle brush like I'm using. And then once you've got this layer on here, you can, like I said, if you want to, let it dry and do a second coat if it's not covered um, as much as you want it to be. And then we are going to be using, you can see this, I was gonna, I'm gonna interrupt myself here. I am, when I do a flat background like this, I always end up kind of going back and forth like this to just smooth it out and make sure that I have the same um, thickness of paint throughout the entire area. That gives me a nice smooth flat, fish, flat finish. And then I will be washing and drying this large brush in preparation for the next step. And I'm not terribly concerned about a super clean line down at the bottom, so you don't need to be either. And you can just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're painting this this bottom portion of our canvas which is the surface that our books and our little cup of paint brushes is going to be sitting on so you can refer to it as a a bookshelf or a table whatever you'd like to consider it as is great it's just going to be a surface <laughs> so i'm going to be using my large brush the colors that i'm using are brown rust and yellow and i'm going to arbitrarily be picking those three colors up without pre-mixing myself a color i'm going to be going back and forth left to right and i'm going to be in essence kind of creating in my head a wood type grain um, or a wood type appearance for this particular surface that we're painting on. So I just did some left to right motions with brown. Now I'm picking up some of my rust. I don't really um, need it necessarily to be lighter or darker from the back to the front. If you wanted to give it that appearance, like it be darker at the top to make it recede a little bit more and lighter at the front, you could do more of the yellow down at the bottom and more of the brown up at the top. That'll give it um, the appearance of it being a little bit lighter towards the front of that surface. Um, but we're going to be giving plenty of visual cues for the um, audience to or the viewer to understand where the front and the back of this surface is. So if you don't get that um, the gradient from it being a little bit darker at the top versus lighter at the bottom, it's okay. And you can see that I'm not really terribly concerned about this upper line because every all of our books are going to be hiding it anyways. So we don't need a perfect line where it meets that wall. You can even paint it a little bit into the wall if you want because we're going to, like I said, be painting over that anyways. And I'm just making sure that I have a nice good coat over this and if you want to again you could certainly do a second coat um, a second coat is going to make it look smoother so if you wanted that to to happen you could certainly dry it and put another coat on top of it but if you're all right with the appearance of it looking a, a little bit more on the rough side with a little bit more texture in it just leave it the way that it is and then we are going to be using our writing utensil for the next step so once you've got this surface all nice and painted you can put your large brush away take out your chalk and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are drawing an outline for the open book that's laying down on our surface i'm going to be using my chalk and i'm going to be giving you a couple of markers and we'll connect those markers and then by the time we're done we'll have something that resembles an open book with a couple of pages that are formed into the shape of a heart. So just know that throughout this process I'm really just guiding you through an outline. We will be putting all of the details on later during the painting process so if it doesn't look um, totally correct <laughs> after I guide you through this outline don't worry it will if you've got your markers in similar places then that similar places to mine, then it'll all work out in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make myself a couple of dots and then we'll connect those dots. So the first one that I'm gonna make is right here. This is going to be on my line that meets my wall and my, and my flat surface. If this is about halfway um, left to right in my canvas, I'm going over to the right maybe about an inch or two. 
and making myself a marker right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down on the right hand side of this surface. I'm going to come in maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and it's about halfway between the top and the bottom. And I'm making myself a marker right in through there. And then over on this left hand side, this is about, if this is halfway in my canvas, I'm going to come over maybe about three or four inches, or this is about a third of the way over from my left hand side. And again, it's about halfway between the top and the bottom of this space make myself a little bit of a marker in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come over from here maybe about an inch or so and go straight up from that. This is about maybe two and a half to three inches away from this um, surface line in through there and make myself a dot. So you should have four dots at this point. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect this one to here and I'm going to start by making a horizontal line in this direction, just coming straight, straight, straight over here until just before I get to this, I'm going to start curving it up and it's going to curve past this marker. So this is going to be a curve, something like that. That's going to be the, um, the makings of the book binder part, the back of it. And then I'm just going to draw a diagonal line from this marker to this marker in through here. And if you're using a different size canvas than I am, this line in through here should just about equate to this area in through here because this is the top of the book. So those should be fairly equal to one another. And then what I'm going to do is from this marker here, I'm going to draw myself a curved line that's going to meet this area in through here. So I'm going to start somewhere in through here and draw myself a curved line. It doesn't have to be a really dramatic curve. This is just something that's going to give us a good, um, a good place to, to start our pages that are laying over. So now what I'm gonna do is from this marker to here, these are gonna be the edges of the pages to the book. So I don't need to um, make it 100% detailed at this point. I'm just really giving myself a, a stopping point for the pages. I do want there to be a little bit of an open spot on this top one so you can see the books behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a, a diagonal line in through there and then I'm going to do another kind of curved line like that. And then the rest of them are all just going to be these little kind of jagged edges, so to speak, that are going to um, meet each other in the middle. So something like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be painting a whole, whole bunch of details on top of this. This, again, just kind of gives us a starting point and an edge to, to work from. And then what I'm going to do over on this right hand side, we're going to make a, a, the edge of the book where the um, end of those pages are. So I'm going to come up just shy of the um, of where the wall meets the surface and I'm in from the left of this marker just a little bit. So go to the left a little bit and up, up, up until you're about a half of an inch away from there. And then you're going to connect these two with just a little a little, it can be a whip, a ripply line, or I suppose it could just be a straight line. It'll, it'll again, all work out in the end. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in maybe another, I would say inch, inch and a half into here and go straight up until you're about a half of an inch above your, um, your line where they, where the two meet. And then this is going to be the other edge of the book. So I'm going to bring this in through like this. And again, these lines might get adjusted a little bit by the time by the time we're done. But this again is just giving you a starter point. Then I'm going to do a little bit of a horizontal line here. That's going to be maybe about an inch wide. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself the from this corner here to over here is going to be the top portion of a heart. So I'm going to start right in through here and I'm going to give myself a curved line like this and then another curved line like this. And I just need one more line in through here. I'm gonna create myself a little peekaboo spot throughout this one. So I'm just gonna give myself another little loop 
so to speak, in through there. And that's all we're gonna do for the outline of our book. We are gonna be using our chalk for the next step, so you can make any little adjustments that you want, and then you can just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the outline for our paintbrush cup and our books that are standing up behind the open book. So I'm gonna be using my chalk, and I am going to, um, really just have fun with this. I'm gonna try and make my, my book standing up as opposed to diagonal, but what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna put a little cup in place where I'm gonna have my, uh, my brushes. So I'm having that over on the left-hand side. I'm gonna have it starting a little bit below the surface um, line where it meets the wall. So somewhere in here, I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a bottom of my, my cup and then I think you can have your cup really whatever shape you want. You can have a mug, you could have a straight um, like ceramic thing, what, whatever, whatever you'd like. I'm gonna do something like that and then bring it up as high as I want. So I've got mine maybe, I don't know, four or five inches tall and then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a curved top because I'm gonna have this, um, it's gonna be open. You don't need to do this oval. I'm just doing that so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna have it open a little bit at the top. Um, and it might change a little bit of shape as I, as I paint it later. So you make yours whatever shape you want. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a whole bunch of parallel vertical lines. So these are gonna be two lines that are next to each other that are the same height. Um, they're gonna be tall books and short books. And what I'll do is I'll just connect them at the top and then after we do that portion of it, I'll show you how to make them look a little bit three-dimensional. So you can have as many books as you want. You can have them as thick or as skinny as you want. I'm gonna have all of mine resting kind of at the same spot on the surface. So they're all gonna, in essence, kind of be flat towards us. So I'm gonna start with my first one in through here. And the trick is just to kind of make them not tipping over too much. So you could certainly use a ruler if you want to. Um, what I am more um, used to doing is just kind of watching the edge of my canvas and that helps me to make a straight line. Plus we're using chalk so you can certainly erase if you want to. Um, and plus when we, when we go to do the painting process of this, we will that will help us to get them a little bit straighter as well. And then I'm just going to connect the top and the bottom. A lot of them you're not going to be able to see. I do want another one next to it that's going to be a little bit shorter, and I don't necessarily need the right line to, well, I don't need two lines. I'm just going to do the right line, something like that. And then you can just kind of keep going with uh, however many books you want. I'm gonna have this one is gonna be taller and it's gonna be wider. So maybe this one comes down in through here. And don't worry about if it meets your, um, your pages. I'll show you how to correct or to paint around those. Maybe this one, maybe I'm gonna have a, a real tiny skinny one in through here. So something like that. Then maybe my next one's gonna be a little bit taller and skinnier. And again, you can make them as tall and skinny or as wide. This next one's gonna be pretty tall and pretty wide. And again, just have some fun with this. They don't have to be exactly as mine. You can certainly, I think I want that one a little bit bigger. Let's make that one a little bit bigger. Yeah, that works. Watch the magic of chalk. I'm just gonna take a little bit of water and get that line to go away. <laughs> That's the beautiful part about chalk. You can just kind of keep, you know, it, changing your lines as you want to. Just a little bit of water helps you to do that. I'm gonna have a real skinny one coming in through here, maybe right in through here. And then I'm just making vertical lines and closing them off at the top. Again, you could make yours much wider or skinnier. This one's gonna come into this little peekaboo spot in through here. So I'm gonna draw a vertical line in through this one little section here. So that way you are gonna be able to detect the color of the book behind it and then close that off at the top. My next one I'm gonna have a little bit more shorter than that one and maybe this one comes over 
to about here then maybe I've got another little one in through here and you can see I'm just kind of having fun with making them all different heights maybe the next one is a little bit shorter and wider and comes out in in through here then maybe this one is really tall maybe this is going to be my tallest one of them all in through there well, I probably should have gotten a bigger piece of chalk for this <laughs> for this task so when you start getting over into this region over here you want to have them on the same playing field as these books so I'm only a little bit maybe a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch below that line so just kind of um, make sure that you you kind of do the same thing over here so this is going to kind of be your line where they stop down here and then this one I'm going to have coming Let's see, what do I want this one? Maybe right about here. This one's gonna be a really tall one and just close it off at the top. And then I got a couple more in through here. Maybe, I think I'm only gonna do maybe two more. So one in through there. And then I got a tall skinny one. I'm leaving a little bit at the edge of my canvas with, that does not have um, a book. You could certainly you know, put yours all the way to the edge if you want to. And then I do want to make them a little bit three-dimensional, so I want to see the sides of some of the, the books. So if we're looking dead on like this, we would see the insides of a couple of these books, um, the taller books. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a little kind of diagonal type line like that and then bring it down. So same thing with this, and I'm going to draw a little diagonal line from the top of that corner and then just bring it down like that. That's We're gonna do a shadowed piece of the book um, to make it look three-dimensional. And then when I get towards the center region, this is where it starts to shift and it would be on the right side of them. So um, I think that one may be a little bit on that side. This one's gonna be diagonal like this and then I'll bring it down like that. It'll be behind those two books. I wouldn't see these, two, these ones because they're shorter. And then I'm really just going for those taller books like that and bring that one down and then this one I've got a little bit in through there maybe this one just goes all the way in through there and that's all I'm going to do for the outline of my books and my paint brush holder cup we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so once you get this done you can put your piece of chalk away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the base coat for our open book. I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using just brown paint. So this section over on the right hand side is pretty um, simple of sorts. I'm just going to paint this entire section that I have um, created with the outline of my chalk. I'm going to go right up to the edge of my chalk but you can still leave a little bit of your chalk showing because we are going to be doing a book binder around the edge of it later. So if you if that helps you to visually um, understand where your edges are, you can certainly do that. When you get to this little edge in through here, I'm going to be just moving my brush a little bit left to right to get uh, almost like a little jagged edge in through there and again it doesn't have to be perfect right now because we're gonna we're gonna add some fine-tuned details to it later this edge along here I'll get that to be pretty pretty straight or um, solid I should say and again if a little bit of your chalk still shows that's okay it that will help you um, guide you through the rest of the process too this section in through here, I'm going to paint this whole right or bottom kind of section of this heart thing. And again, you can leave a little bit of your um, chalk showing along the edge. And then in through this area in through here, I just have to pay attention to where, I, where I'm going. I want to make sure I stay inside the pages and don't um, color on the book binders from um, behind and I'm just bringing a little bit of that down and through here and again your chalk is going to serve you well during this because you can leave a little bit of that outline just to continue to to guide you through the rest of the process when we put more details on this book and then in through here this is just going to be a flat coat and if you're using um, this a similar type of paint that I'm using which is a student grade paint it tends to be pretty see-through 
Um, so you're going to most likely still see the separation between the wall and the um, flat surface, which is totally fine. So don't be alarmed if after this step you can still see that because I've planned for that and we will we will get rid of it with future steps. Um, but when you get towards this left edge of the of the book pages, so with this flat brush that I'm using, I'm using the the more narrow pointy side to get these little pieces of the paper to come out towards those edges. And again, I'm not terribly concerned about it being perfect at this point. I'm really just starting the process of these pages of the books of the book. We are going to be um, utilizing a, a more evident technique when we go to put the um, the details on it. But this is again just giving us our base coat for it. And then we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So again, you can probably detect that mine is a little bit see-through and translucent and you can see the stuff behind it, but that's all right. And then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting the base coat for our books that are standing up and our, our cup over here on the left hand side. I'm using my medium brush and I'm going to probably use all the colors on my palette <laughs> and I'm going to be pre-mixing some colors but we're going to just go kind of one color at a time um, and some of them I'm not going to pre-mix so we're going to just start with green on our brush and I'm going to do my green books first. You can have as many green books as you want. I'm going to do this one with green paint in through here. I'm just adding a solid color of green paint and the the books that are, I thought I started with an easy one but I guess I didn't because it's intermingled with the edge of this paper here but that's alright. Um, so the books that you can see the side of them like that, the um, the three-dimensional kind of side to it, what you'll do is you're going to take whatever color you're using on the front and just add a tiny bit of black paint with your brush for that dark section and that's going to give you the shadowed side of that particular book. So I am bringing these all the way to my chalk marks. I'm picking up the green with a tiny bit of black paint to get a darker version back in through here. And if it helps you to keep your a little bit of your chalk right now, that's fine um, because we are going to be doing highlights and shadows on these. I'm moving on to my next green book, which I, I'm going to do this one over here is going to be green. So I just reloaded my brush with my green paint and I'm just getting this colored in. It's probably, again, going to look a little streaky um, as you're doing this first coat but don't worry about it because we're going to be doing all kinds of cool details and stuff on our books. I think I'm going to put a little sliver of that color back in through here. And then let's see what's my next color going to be. I think I'm going to do my red books next. So I just washed and dried my brush and I'm picking up some of my red color. I'm going to have this book in through here red. And I know because I am using a dark base for these books which is the black background that these colors are going to get darker as they dry and I'm okay with that because I'm going to have highlights and shadows and I want that dark base for me to um, add some dimensional elements to it. I'm also going to do this book in through here red and of course you can certainly make your books whatever color you would like. You can customize these. Maybe you want all of yours to be different variations of blue or purple or any anything that you can imagine. These are your books. They are coming from your imagination. You can make them any colors that you want. You can have them, you know, all orange if you want. Don't forget this little sliver in here. This is going to allow us to get that 
um, three-dimensional look to it. I'm bringing it right up to the, the chalk mark. And then the next color that I'm going to do, I'm going to have a couple that are of a blue sort. So I'm going, oh, I've got chalk in my paint. We'll just, we'll just get that out of my painting. I'm going to go for a soft kind of weathered country type of blue. I don't want it to be too vibrant. So I'm going to take some of my blue. I already kind of pre-mixed my, oops, I got a little a little moisture on my oh I had added um, water to my black a little while ago so I'm taking my blue and I'm gonna add a bit of green to it and maybe a little bit of brown you can make this into whatever color you want I'm just kind of getting mine to be a nice like dull blue maybe a little bit of white to soften it up a little bit again you can get this to be whatever shade of blue that you want I'm gonna mix quite a bit of it because I'm going to be doing uh, quite a few of my books in this particular color. So again, I just mixed a little green, a little blue, a little brown to get a soft, I'm going to call it a country kind of blue color. And again, you could make yours whatever, whatever color you'd like, but that's about where I'm going with this color. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to color as many books as I want with this color. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do this one here over on the left edge here. This one's going to have a nice blue color. And I'm using this flat synthetic um, brush because it provides me with a, um, a firm bristle that will give me nice clean lines on the edges. So I like to use these type of brushes when I'm doing um, paintings with a lot of straight lines in it because I don't like to use a ruler much for those of you who have watched me I didn't I you know I I actually haven't even stepped back to see if these are straight so if they're a little crooked I'm sorry about that but um, so I don't use a ruler a lot so I, I do rely upon my tools to help me out and you can see I just painted into my cup a little bit but I'm all right with that I'm bringing this all the way down so this um, short flat brush helps me to get these clean lines without much effort. I added a touch of black to my brush to get this little back piece of this book to be in the shadow a bit. So that's a, the same blue, only a little bit darker. Now I'm going to pick a couple more books that are going to be blue. I'm going to put this big, huge one in the middle. It's going to have this blue color to it. So again, the, these short, flat brushes will help to provide these clean edges for you um, without a whole lot of effort. And if you bump into another book or if you need to do, or if you like, I, it looks like my um, chalk definitely needs to be um, erased on the edges of this to make it look more stable. Or you can bring some black into your edges if you feel like your books are, are you know, a little bit not straight enough at the top. Oops, I just kind of painted into that. That's all right. And I'm bringing this right to the edge. But again, you can make these books any color that you want. And when we add the highlights and the shadows to them, that's going to that's gonna help to make them look even more realistic. I'm going to add a touch of black to my brush with that blue on it to get this little edge over here to be the same color, only a little bit darker. And that way it'll make it look like it's going into the shadow a bit. And then I'm gonna do this, the, um, the last one over here on the right with the blue color. So I, I might have added a little bit of white to my brush there, or it's mixing with my white chalk because it looks a little bit lighter to me, but that's all right. All of my books can be different colors. I'm gonna erase that little piece of chalk down at the bottom because I don't need it. And if your books are old, they can have a little bit of wrinkle to them, a little bit of wrinkle to the edges to them. So don't feel terribly um, concerned if they don't have super straight edges. I just added a tiny bit of black to my brush just to get this side piece of this book to fade off into the shadows a bit. And then let's see, what am I gonna do for my next color? I think I'm gonna create maybe a, a peachy color for my cup. So I'm gonna wash and dry my little brush or my medium brush, and I'm gonna create a peach color with a red, yellow, and white. And again, 
You can have yours whatever color you want. Maybe you want to add a little bit of brown into it so it's more of a rustic kind of peach color. So whatever is visually appealing to you, the more brown you use in this type of um, painting, the older and more like antique looking it's gonna it's gonna come out so again whatever your visual preference is I'm going to color my cup with this color and again if you if some of your edges of your cup or of your um, chalk are still visible I'm putting my cup in front of that book so you saw me just go right in front of it um, it's going to look streaky, don't worry about it. This is just the first coat. I'm going to give it a little bit of a back edge over here. But I was saying um, your, your edges of your chalk, if they're still evident, you can just erase them with water. They don't have, you don't have to um, worry about covering them with paint. If they're in a spot that you don't want, you can just erase it with water. And then I'm going to use this color maybe in this tiny little book right here. And again, yours doesn't have to be exactly the same color pattern that mine is. And if you bump into the edges of your book, the open book pages, that's okay. Um, we just want it to kind of get up near it. And when we go to do the details on that book, that will we'll help to clean up any little edges that we might have um, gotten in our way. And then let's see what else. Maybe I'll do... I think that's all I'm going to do for that darker peach. I think I'm going to um, modify this color and make it a little bit lighter and more yellow. So I'm going to take some of that and just add a little bit of yellow and white just to get myself more of a pale peach color, I guess, would be a good description for this. So I'm going somewhere in this vicinity for this color. I think I'm going to do maybe this book in, yeah, I'm, I'm progressively getting these colors to be lighter and more vibrant, I guess, on some of these books. But again, wherever your visual preference is, is totally fine. I'm going to get it to go all the way up to the top. And the top of these books can, can be curved up or down, um, depending on how big the binder of that book is or how... Um, soft it is. Some books have really soft um, binders and over time they they take on a different um, way of bending as they're as they're aging. So again don't don't um, labor or you know be terribly concerned about those tiny little details because it's all gonna visually work out by the time by the time we're done. And then I think I like this color. I think I'm gonna do another one with this color over in through here and then I just have a couple more to go I think I'm going to go into some really natural earthy tones for the next couple of books because I like I, I'm, I'm digging this one in more of an antique kind of um, look as opposed to brand new spanking books that you just got that you just got off of Amazon that are all shiny. These ones have been on the bookshelf for a while. So we got that one in through there. I think the next two are going to be, oh, maybe I'll do this one with a little bit more yellow in it. So I'm not even washing my brush. I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow and white with whatever was on my brush. This one's going to be a little bit more, yeah, we got some yellow going on here. So just a pale, soft yellow. I think I'll do this book with, yeah, there we go. And then I'll use those I, I said I was going to use some earthy colors, but I figured, I don't know, yellow was speaking to me for that moment. So again, you can have your books whatever color that you would like them to be. And then I've got, I think, two or three more little books. One, two, three. I'm going to do maybe like a, a brownish color for, the, um, for these. So I'm just going to, for this one over here, I'm just going to be picking up some of my rust color or the burnt sienna. I'm going to do that for the base of this one over in through here. And then maybe I'll just modify this color a little bit for the, for the last two. So you can certainly have every single book a different color. Again, you could have them all the same color, whatever is visually working for you. I'm gonna use my burnt sienna and then maybe some brown and white to give myself like a tan color for this next one that we got going on. And of course you can have yours 
you know, more on the yellow side, if you want to add yellow to it or whatever is visually working for you, again, you can do it in whatever value you want. Yeah, that's looking good. So this is just a nice creamy tan color. And then what I'll do for um, the side of it is I'm just going to add a little bit more. I think I want a little more brown in it. Let's, let's make it a little darker here, a little more brown. Um, when I go to do the side of it, I will do it with a touch of black on my brush. And again, I'm just getting right up to that chalk mark and bringing it straight down. And if you need to adjust or modify your edges at all, you can certainly go ahead and do that once you've got this step done. But again, we've got highlights and shadows and all, all of your words and all kinds of other information that is going to be added to the book. So I just added a touch of um, black to my, my, to my dirty brush to get this left hand side to be a bit darker. And because I'm using a dirty brush, the colors will blend together. And now my book is gonna grow a bit taller because I just made that mark a bit taller than I had anticipated. My, my hand got away from me on that one. So that book just grew a bit more. And then I just have one tiny little book in through here. And I think I'm just gonna use the same color. I think this is gonna work, just a little tan color. And these books will look more separated once we do the um, the highlights and the shadows to them. And then we are gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your books co colored with their base coat, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the base coat for the paint brushes that are gonna be in my cup. So maybe you wanna have pens and pencils or scissors or whatever kind of tools that you wanna have or feathers or you know whatever you wanna have in your cup, feel free to put it in your cup. I'm gonna put paint brushes because that's what's in my book library is books of art and paintbrushes. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to, my base coat is going to be with gray. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white and add a touch of black to it and make myself a gray color. You could really utilize any um, lighter color than black as your base coat. If you want to have all purple brushes, you can certainly use a purple base. I'm just really utilizing this to plan them out. So that way I have, um, a structure to to build upon so I've got myself just a medium gray color nothing fancy there and I think I'm gonna have one coming up from they're all coming from the inside of my cup so I'm gonna have it in through here and I think I'm just gonna have it coming up at an angle like this this one's gonna have this one's gonna be a big round pointy brush it's gonna have a big head to it these are some of my favorite brushes. So <laughs> you can do some of your favorite brushes as well, or you can just make them up as you go. And I'm gonna have it a little bit skinnier there and then just a little bit wider like that. And you just want them to make sense that they will um, fit in your cup and that they don't necessarily look um, too broken or too bendy and stuff. So I'm just gonna try, I started with a single line and now I just kind of manipulated it into the shape that I want. So that's gonna be one. I think the next one I'm gonna have is maybe an angled brush. So I'm gonna have that one coming. Let's have that one coming from in through here. And again, I want them to look like they're coming out of the brush and making, making a bit of sense. So maybe this one goes something like this. And I'm gonna have it, you know, your, the, handle part of your brushes. Some of them have um, bumps in them for for ergonomic reasons for you to hold on to them easier. Some of them get a little bit wider at the top. It all depends on the on the style of brush that you're using. I'm going to stick the end of this brush is going to be kind of up like this and I'm going to have it just kind of like an angled brush like this and then I'm just going to kind of make my little brush pieces in through there. And then I think I'm gonna have a really long pointy brush. They're called rigger brushes, the ones with the really tall, is that the kind of brush? I don't know, maybe, no, I don't know. I might be getting them confused, but it's really tall and slender. It can be a round brush. I'm gonna have this one kind of sticking out the top 
like this, just kind of straight up. And then I will have a really skinny um, bristle kind of coming out the end of it. Almost looks like a little candle. And then I'm going to have a fan brush. I think this one might be coming out the corner of my of my cup and through here. And mm, maybe I'll have it coming straight up like this. Yeah, there we go. It's going to be in front of my of my other one. And then I will um, make my ends. Maybe I want this a little bit taller. So I can have this one kind of taller than than this one in here so you can see it and we'll get that little edge over here and then my fan brush is going to kind of fan out at the top like this and of course you can have as yours as interesting as you want it can be as new or as old as you want a lot of my brushes in my brush cup don't look very new they've been around a while so <laughs> you can certainly have fun with that and then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can kind of fiddle with this all you want. And you can, util you can put the small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing our highlights and our shadows on our books that are standing up and on our um, little cup over here. So how I'm going to do this, I'm using my medium brush. I'm going to be using brown and white plus whatever color I used for that particular book. So I'm going to start with my shadows and I'm going to start with just brown paint. So I have brown paint on my brush. My brush is firm, which is going to allow me to move this paint as I'm, as it's drying. I want my books to be darker at the bottom and in between each book so that that'll make the book binder look like it's rounded on each one and they kind of are all sitting at the same level forward um, as one another so i will start i'm going to start over here so you can kind of see have a good visual as to um, what i'm talking about so i have just brown paint on my brush i know i want all of them at the bottom to be pretty dark so i can literally just take my brown paint because I know that my brown paint is translucent and just kind of rub it at the bottom of the books and up along the inside where the two books are meeting one another and if your books are on the darker side and this brown is not dark enough for you you can certainly pick up a tiny bit of black paint I just did this so you can see what it would look like and that will help you to get an even darker shadow in between those two books I might actually like it better on mine too so I think I'm going to use a little bit of black for mine because it gives it a deeper shadow in through there but if your books are on the lighter side then maybe um, just the brown would work for you so I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my shadows and I'm okay if it doesn't blend perfectly with that center area but if it concerns you you can certainly just pick up some of that original color which would be my blue and get it to blend in with that shadowy area so Oops, that was a little bit of light on my brush. Don't you like it when the instructor says oops during their painting <laughs> process? But nothing that we can't fix, so that's good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this one over here so you can see how that process goes. So I've got my, um, my brown, which is where I'm going to start. And if I want a little bit of black, I can pick that up as well. So I'm going to get my shadow in down here on the bottom side. And then I'll pick up some of that original peachy color. And I'm going to do my highlights in a minute, but I'm just getting my shadow on here to get it to um, kind of recede down at the bottom. I just picked up a tiny bit of black to make sure that I've got it a little bit darker down here. I definitely want to have the illusion of a shadow, so sometimes um, I like to add it slowly so that way I'm not overdoing it. I never have too, too much paint on my brush. So I've got my shadow at the bottom of that. We'll add the shadow on the surface in a little bit. But right now I'm just going to kind of continue through and add my shadows in between my books and on the sides of my book. So again, a little bit of black and brown. I think I want, I'll touch in through there. 
bring this up and through here I've got a little bit of shadow in through there and sometimes you you know might find that you want to travel a little bit into um, a, a different region maybe you want your book to look a little bit on the darker side and you're enjoying that shadowy kind of color so you can certainly tint it a little bit differently I'm going to add some more of my original green down here just so I make sure that it's not see-through so again my my shadow color is down at the bottom combined with the original color if I needed it. So that's going to that's gonna work out there. I think I need a little bit more of this light color on this one just so it's not too see-through um, where that shadow is. So I just picked up some of that original color. So And I'm just tweaking it so I make sure that I've got that shadow to blend with the, um, with the book itself. And of course, if you needed to do any more there, and I'm gonna add a highlight to the top in a minute, but I'm just gonna kind of go plug away and do my, my shadows. And as I, as I need to, I will get that color to blend in with, um, with the actual color of the book itself if I need to. And you can see my, um, my chalk marks are quickly disappearing now because the we are taking care of that interior portion of the of the binder so i'm going to pick up some of my original peach color to make sure that this blends in with my shadowy area i just painted a little little extra over there that's fine pick up a little bit of my red paint to get this red to blend in with my shadow. And you can see this process is going a bit quicker than even doing that base coat just because you've already got a good solid um, making on there. And I'm just going one book to the next. You, I suppose you could do all of your blue ones and then all of your um, brown ones and such, but this um, or do the the shadow in between and then get it to blend in so whatever kind of works for you you can see I'm probably gonna show you a couple of different um, methods to go about it if you feel like you're cruising along doing these interior little um, shadows and the and the shadows down at the bottom of the book then just go with that and then come back on top and add the um, original color back on top to make it blend but you might have your brush might allow you to to get these to blend in really nice and well and have some good shadows along the edges I think I need to make that shadow go all the way up to make that book look like it makes sense up here and then I'm gonna put some of my creamy color on here or just get this to blend in along the edge like this and with again with these firmer brushes they will help you move that paint along and thin it out where you want it to be thinned out. I'm going to put a second coat of that base on in a second, but I'm just going to cruise along and do my little shadows first. It feels like this is the easiest process for me right now to get these shadows on here. And you can see because I'm doing like a long continual stroke and I'm, and I'm not laboring over it too, too much my hand is allowing me to get pretty straight lines on here and if i had a book that was a little extra wobbly along the edge like this one in through here i can certainly kind of correct it as i'm adding these these highlights and shadows but right now i'm just adding the shadows at the base and in between those books like this and now i'm going to start pulling some of those original colors just to make sure that it blends well enough. This blue book to me looks pretty good. So I'm just adding um, a little bit of the blue just to make sure that it blends in with the shadow. And of course you can keep tweaking it as much as you want. We'll add a bit of a, a little highlight on top of it in a second, but I just want to make sure that I get my shadows on here. So one of my biggest tips or tricks is I am constantly making sure that I, for me, have the right amount of paint on my brush, that I never have too much. Um, I'd rather have too little on my brush than too much. So I am constantly have a paper towel at the ready to help me control that, um, that process. I'm gonna add some of this original rust color back on top of here to make sure that that shadow blends in with the, um, with the base 
color and let's see we just got a couple more of the base colors to make sure we've got um, a good representation and then I'll start adding those little bits of highlights up at the top so again just the base color plus a little bit of brown and black will get these shadows to to work their way in nicely and this is my peach color and again some of your colors might start um, merging into one another I am a a painter who does not wash my brush a lot <laughs> because I love my colors to talk to each other throughout the painting so you'll find um, like when I just went to this one to this one I didn't wash my brush I just kind of wiped it off on my paper towel because I want this um, I wanted those colors to kind of talk a little bit more together <laughs> so I didn't I didn't wash my brush um, and I'm thinking I'm almost done with the with the shadows and stuff I just want a better little representation on this one and then I'll start doing my highlights so again you could certainly oh I need to do a second coat on my red ones too um, you could certainly tweak these colors maybe during this process one of these blue ones ends up lighter or darker than the other one maybe one of the red ones ends up more on the brown side or on the you know the pink side maybe you add a bit of white to one of the red ones and it turns a little more on the pink side or you add a little brown to it you know you can certainly tweak these colors so they don't all look the same and when you're on this second step that's an easier time to do it. So now I'm going to start adding my little highlights. So it's just going to be white plus whatever that color was for that um, particular object. So I'm going to use some white with my with my peach color. And for me, my light source, I'm just saying, is up above, maybe from a lamp or something above um, these books. So their lightest part will be up towards the top of them. And then whatever, like this has a little bit of a shape to it, so I'm going to bring some of this highlight down um, towards the, the bottom a little bit, but you know, you can certainly um, make this as light or as dark as you want. And I'm not going for photorealism, I'm just going for enjoying the process. I'm going to go ahead and do my other peach ones while I have this color on my brush. So I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of a highlight right at the top and then pick up some of that peach color and get it to blend down that, that binder. And again, I, I'm not using much paint. I just want this to, to blend in and tell the story that the light is coming from above and we've got a little bit of um, shape on the book. So I can do that with these ones as well. I've got my my white on my brush. I noticed I, I just noticed I missed that little piece in through there. So I'll get that in a second. So just adding a little bit of white and I'm going more down the center of the the binder as opposed to the edges. Oops, that one just totally grew on me. Um, nothing a little bit of water and black paint won't fix when I'm done, but I'm going more towards the center for that highlighted part because that's what's going to tell the story of it being more on the round side so if you can get that center area to be a little bit more bright that's going to again tell the viewer that that's the part that's popping out the most so i add that little bit of white up at the top and then i just kind of get it to blend in with the rest of that book down the center and again, if you want yours to change in color as they go from one book to the next, awesome. If you've got them, you know, pretty similar, great. I'm going to go ahead and do my blue ones now. So again, I'm just going to start with a bit of white. I shouldn't go two in a row. I was going to just go do my efficiency thing and do two in a row, but that wouldn't have been the smartest move. Um, you can also do the little edge up this um, the side edge the ones that you can see if you just it doesn't need to go white for that highlight up at the top you can just do a little bit lighter of the blue maybe the blue that you've used in the in the center that would that would help and then I'm just going to kind of get this to blend in with the rest of the book and again it doesn't there's different types to the the, the binders they can be um, have a little bit of movement up at the top they can be flat it depends on the softness maybe they're a hard book or a soft book it's really you know whatever you'd like it to be is totally fine go ahead and do my next one here 
adding a bit of that lightness up at the top, bringing it down towards that center area, adding my original glue to get that to um, stay nice and light in the center, putting a touch up at the top, making sure I've got this corner fully painted. And then I just kind of repeat this for, for all of them. So again, you might end up having books. One is gonna be lighter or darker than the other one. You might end up doing more layers on yours than mine, whatever kind of visually works for you. And if you can get some dimension on it, awesome. Again, it might take you a couple of minutes to do it. The trick for me is just to kind of keep that paint moving while it's wet. Um, and that allows me to add those that visual information of the highlights and the shadows um, going throughout the throughout the painting. So I'm going to go ahead and do my green one. So I just added some white paint to my brush. Got the the top white. There might still be a little remnants of my blue on there, but that's all right. And then I'm just going to go ahead and get that light area to blend in with the rest of the book. If I need a tiny bit up top, I can add that making sure I've got this corner nice and finished. And again, this might be something that takes you a long time to keep adding these layers and getting these colors to talk to one another, but it's worth it. Once, you, once you've got the idea in your head what you want the appearance of these to be, you can certainly um, enjoy the process. It might take you a little bit longer than, than you thought it was gonna take, but you know, just enjoying the process and coming out with a product that you um, enjoy looking at is is great. But if you've but if you've enjoyed painting it, that's even better. And I might end up adding um, clipping this little corner off in a bit with some blue, but or some black to um, correct that edge. But we'll see how it looks when I'm when I'm all said and done. And then let's see. Oh, I've just got my brown books, I think. So I'm gonna go white up at the top here and bring just kind of bring this down a little bit get my tan color and just get this to blend in and make this binder nice and and bright and make it look like it is protruding a bit maybe that's a bit too much paint up there and then let's see what are we going to do for the next step we're actually going to be utilizing this same medium brush for the next step so once you've got your um books all nice and done. Oh, I, I just might have to make sure that I have all of my books done. <laughs> Looks like I might have missed this one in through here. So we'll take care of that one as well. Just get a nice light coat on it. And you might find that you've missed some of your books as well. <laughs> so if, if you've missed books as I have, just kind of make sure that you get them all. I got this little tiny one in through here too. And again, just adding that little light streak down that middle, maybe even my red ones need a tiny bit, a tiny bit more of a little punch down the middle of them. The red ones, if you don't want them to turn pink, you could use red with a little bit of yellow on your brush. That would definitely, that would definitely help. Um, but if you're cool with it being a little pink, you could just do red and white. And then I have this one over here. So I'm going to just pick up some of my burnt sienna like that. And this one, you can certainly go with white as your highlight. I just picked up a little bit of this light yellow in order to, um, so it doesn't turn too pink on me. You could use white as your highlight or you could use that lighter yellow shade, whatever kind of works. And I just kind of move my brush up and down to get that essence of a little bit lighter of a spot. Let's see, let me go down the line here. I got another little green one. I thought I did them all in the right order, but you know, I was just kind of floating around with them. You could certainly um, do your all green ones and then all your red ones. This is gonna make for a really fun editing process for, for my production. <laughs> he, he's not gonna like how I just switched all of my brushes in order all <laughs> chaotically like that, but that's okay. We'll follow along, I'm sure. Um, I was just having fun and just making my, my highlights and my shadows on my books and they're looking fabulous. So that's all that matters. You can do it in whatever order you'd like. And then we're going to use this same medium brush for the next step. I think I got them all. And if I didn't, you'll come back and, and one will be magically done. <laughs> so we'll use that medium brush for the next step so you can get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our open book. 
I'm going to be using mostly my medium brush, but after I explain what I'm doing, you might opt to use your medium and your small brush. So I would hold off on starting until you see what I'm going to do, and then you can make a decision all on your own. I haven't fully made my decision yet. <laughs> I know it's going to be a lot with this brush, but you know, you might decide a little bit different. So what we're going to do, we're going to be doing a book binder. I'm going to be using kind of a neutral orange kind of color for that. You could certainly do your book binder in any color you want, seeing as we've got all kinds of colors um, displayed throughout the painting. And then I'm going to be separating these couple of pieces in through here. I'll show you how to make some a, pieces of the paper that are on top that appear to be on the flatter side or we're seeing more of them and then we'll do all those little streaky pieces that are going to represent the side profile of the um, pieces of paper. So I'm going to start with my medium brush and I'm going to do my book binder first just so I have a stable structure in place and I'm just going to go for like an orangey color so I'm going red and orange or red and yellow red and yellow makes orange and you could do a light color or a dark color maybe I'll use some of my burnt sienna too whatever you want to do I just want it to stand out a little bit different than that ground so I'm just starting with kind of a flat color and I'll probably add little streaks of, of highlights or lightness into it. So I've got my, my um, medium brush. I'm using it on the skinnier side and I'm just following my chalk line. So this is gonna be maybe a eighth of an inch wide. It's not very wide at all. And I can right now notice that that is not gonna be a different of enough color. So I need to make it a little bit different. So I'm gonna add a bit more red and yellow to it so it's a little bit more vibrant and when I add a little bit of a highlight on it that will also make it a bit more um, different so that was that was an on-the-fly change in my color just to make it so I could see the difference um, from the the floor or the surface we're going to be putting a shadow underneath this in a minute as well which will help help to separate it from that surface also I just want to make mention, as I'm coming towards this tip, I'm going out a little bit further than the pieces of paper, so that'll make it look a little bit more realistic as well. And then I'm going to bring this color all the way around this edge. And again, I'm just kind of turning my brush so I can use the skinny side of it. But if you wanted to use your small brush, feel free to do so. And you could, um, once you get it on there, if you want to add a tiny bit of white to your brush you can add some little tiny highlights throughout it if you want to that adds a bit more fun dimension to it i will again be having a shadow underneath it in a minute but i just want to add as much dimension to it as i can and then what i'm going to do i'm washing and drying my medium brush and i'm going to put in place the um defining lines that are gonna separate certain stuff. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush with white paint on my brush to start. I'm gonna give myself a, um, a slender line that's gonna be kind of on the inside of here. It's going to cross over and go on the exterior of this side and it's gonna come right about in through here. So you can either use this brush to do it or your small brush, whichever brush is gonna be more um, conducive to the way that you paint. And I'm bringing this along the inside part of this line in through here. And that is gonna give me the exterior piece of this piece of paper. And then I'm gonna do the same thing or a similar thought process from here, I'm going to bring a line that's going to end up meeting this curve over here, and it's going to come and meet in through here. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going right from this center in through here, and I'm, again, just using the skinny side of my, of my brush or the corner of my brush. I'm meeting with this curve in through here, and then I'm going to come about halfway up this curve, and I'm going to bring it back around, and it's going to meet in through here. So this is gonna be the exterior edge of this piece of paper. And they don't have to meet exactly. I'm trying to make them look a little realistic here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a 
the side kind of profile of the book in through here. So I'm going to go from this corner right in through here and I'm going to make myself a line. It's going to get a little bit wider as it comes towards the binder itself. So something like this. And then I'm going to bring it around. I'm coming close to my book binder but not hitting it. And I'm going to bring this down in through here. And then I'm going to lightly just pull this out like this. We'll get to the rest of it in a minute. <laughs> I just wanted to do that before that paint dry. I think I'm actually going to make a change on the fly here. I'm dropping this line a little bit further. We'll be able to get rid of that in a second, but I want to drop this a little bit further. I want it to look like it's closer to the edge here. So I'm going to just do an on the fly little change. A little bit of black and brown on my brush is going to get rid of this line in through here. So again, beautiful part about acrylic paint is if you do something that you're not totally sold on, that's okay. Just paint over it, you know, and you can you can make a correction. You can let it dry. You can I like I like this dipping down a little bit more so that that works visually for me much better. So then I'm going to add a big piece of paper up here on the top left hand side. So we're going to see this whole top of this piece of paper in through here. So I'm going to bring it from the corner of my book binder up to this corner in through here. So I'm going to start down in through here and bring this like this. And I already have the makings of this corner, which we made earlier. And I'm going to color in this um, big top piece with a lot of white. And as I get down towards the inside part where it's meeting the other one, you don't necessarily, you can just kind of let the, the paint almost blend in to that background. Just make sure that it covers whatever edge of your books we're showing. You wanna make sure that it, the back books, you just wanna make sure that you've got that kind of covered in through there. And then I'm going to paint um, with the same medium brush, I'm gonna paint the, the flatter parts of the of this one, this one, and this one, and then we're gonna separate this in through here. So I've got just white paint on my brush, and what I'm gonna do, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm starting over on this right hand edge, and I'm making sure that my edges are pretty clean, and then I'm gonna just lightly pull this paint in through into the shadow of the um, of the other piece of paper. So what will happen is I'm getting it to kind of naturally just blend in with the shadow that is happening underneath that. I'm going to do same thing up here. I had plenty of paint on my brush. I'm bringing it right to the edge of my um, books behind it and then I'm just pulling it gently into the shadow area. I'm going to do the same thing with this one up and through here. I'm just getting it to connect up on that top ridge and then just pulling it down. And again, I'm making sure that I bring it far enough so I don't have that evident outline um, or missing painting um, behind it where the other books are, or yeah, where the other books are behind it. And then I'm gonna take this paint and I'm gonna connect this corner to over here. This is gonna be the bottom piece of paper in through here, so I just do kind of a a loop like that and then just bring it in through here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just using that white paint on my brush to do the little tips of the pieces of paper along the edge. So I'm really just tapping it so I've got like, they almost look like the ends of little feathers to me. Maybe you see a bit of this piece of paper in through here, a bit more of this one than the other ones. And I just want to give you the illusion that this book is open and that we're seeing the, the edges of some of these pieces of paper, maybe some flat parts on those ones. And now I'm just using the edge or the side of my brush. I have not reloaded my brush and I'm giving you pieces of the edges of the pieces of paper right now. I'll do the same thing in um, that right hand section. I'm leaving this open because we're going to put a little shadow in there in a second. And right now I'm just kind of rubbing the remnants of that white into um, the edge of this in through here to make this look like there's little pieces of paper. I'll make it a little bit stronger along the edge in through there. 
And now I'm going to pick up a touch of white and yellow on my brush to give myself very little yellow, very little yellow at all. This is going to give you that extra bit of highlight on the um, tips of these pieces of paper. You can um, create the illusion of light by um, changing the, the tonal value of a color. So I've just added a bit of yellow to my white and when it sits next to um, the other white that is on top of a dark color, this will make it look even brighter. So I can, I can steer the viewer into thinking something's a lot brighter than it is by using maybe a little yellow in it or making um, the value of it just a, a bit different than the, the color that it sits next to. So I don't have to just go white, white, white to make something look the brightest it can look. I can make it look like there's, you know, a, a light bulb shining upon this by putting a touch of yellow in it too. So those are just little tricks that you can use to to add um, extra highlights to things. I'm going to go ahead and put a bit of a um, of a shadow within these two little sections. So I'm just going to wash and dry my um, medium brush and touch a tiny bit of black paint and going to get a little bit of a shadow in through here. I already have a beautiful brown base underneath there to to work with so I don't have to do much here just adding that bit of a black shadow and making it blend in with the brown and I'm going to do the same thing over on here I'm going to start with some black paint and get this little shadow up in through here oops little shadow up in through here and then blend it in with some brown at the bottom so I kind of did this one a little bit reverse add a little bit of brown down here but just get them to blend in together and if you felt that you wanted to do anything more in this little section you could certainly um, add a bit of finesse in here if your edges weren't clean enough you can do that and then I just need to add a little shadow underneath the paper, between the paper and the book binder. So I'm just taking a little bit of black paint on my brush and just kind of sneaking it in between these two in through here. We're going to add a shadow underneath the book in a minute because we're going to add it on all of the surfaces. So you don't have to worry about that quite yet. And then of course you can make any little tweaks that you want on this to make it look any more realistic or um, dimensional that you would like. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful pieces of paper and if you have little chalk marks that you want to get rid of just take a tiny bit of water and that will um, erase those little chalk marks. You can take out your small brush get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're finishing our little paint brushes that are in our cup and any little details around our cup that we might need to um, finesse at all. So I'm going to be using my small brush. Um, not sure what colors I'm going to use. Definitely black and white and maybe some brown. Um, and maybe, I don't know what colors I'm going to use. I'm just going to make them maybe wood and silver and my brush, brush tips might have a little bit of color from one of my books in it. Like maybe I painted the side of the book or something. Um, so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this one first because to me it sits behind my fan brush. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of black and brown and give myself um, some texture down that center of it and give it a little bit of... Um, a highlight up on the top. I just picked up a bit of white. I just want to get a nice kind of smooth coat on my brush. I'm probably not going to have um, too much detail on these. I'm really just looking to give the illusion that there's some fun brushes sitting inside of these cups um, and you can have yours whatever color you want. Maybe you want yours to be all purple or any any color you want. I just am picking up some of this little peach color. I'm going to put some of it in the in the top bristles. Maybe a little a little of black to give a little bit of um, dimension throughout those bristles. Maybe we'll put a little um, little band of silvery something around 
around the edge here. So I'm just picking up a little bit of white now, maybe adding a little bit of highlight in through here. And again, you can get yours to be whatever whatever color you want. I'm gonna add a bit more, I'm adding a bit more white right now just to get um, some more color up here, a bit more of my peach color. So I'm just kind of layering on these colors in whatever order that I want. I'm just kind of alternating them for this particular brush. I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe a touch more um, darkness over on this left hand side just to give it a little bit more a little bit more dimension there we go and then i'm going to go ahead and move on to my next brush which will be my fan brush i think this one i'm going to have more on the yellow side the handle of it so i just picked up some of i don't know whatever yellow i used for this um book there yeah this is going to be a nice one and i'm putting this one right in front of the other one and i used that gray as a base to provide me with a nice neutral background for um, these brushes. I can certainly tweak them whatever color I want. I just put some brown on my brush right now just to get this to have a little bit of a dimensional element to it. You can certainly have yours whatever way you want. You can have yours with little splatters of paint all on them if you want. You can have yours, you know, super fun. Um, I'm putting a little band of sorts at the top of here, a little holder um, for the bristles like that. And again, you, you can use your own brushes as inspiration. You can have little parts that bump out here and there. I'm gonna go ahead and add some color into the bristles. So I think I have black and white on my brush and a little bit of that yellow too. And just kind of adding some, some dimension in through here. Gonna pick up a touch more white just to get these to pop out a bit more. And I'm not pushing my brush hard. I do have a good amount of um, paint on my brush right now, which is allowing me to get these um, nice little individual streaks when I wanna go and do some dimensional aspects. Like I just picked up a bit of black. I'll put a little bit of black underneath here as if this, th this piece is casting a shadow on the brush and maybe a little bit of black up where these bristles are coming right out of this portion in through here and just adding a bit of a shadow here and a bit of a shot or a bit of a highlight there can really make something look a lot more dimensional i think i'm going to put a touch more black down at the base of it just to give it um so that the stem of it doesn't look too flat in through there that looks pretty good maybe it maybe a little more white up at the top just to give it a touch more punch in through here. And again, I use my bro my own brushes as inspiration and my brushes are a mess. So I, I don't take the best care of my brushes as much as I should, but it's all right. We all have our own things. So um, my next one, I think I'm just gonna do this one. Um, maybe I'll do this one more of a rusty color. So I just picked up some burnt sienna and I'm painting this one in a burnt sienna kind of color. I'm going right into my cup. I'll give them a little bit of a shadow down below um, in a minute. So maybe this, this one looks a little bit more like wood. I'll put a touch of um, a little decorative or a little handle where the, the piece that holds the bristles in, put that up there. Maybe a little shadow going into those bristles. Maybe these bristles are gonna be red. I think I'm gonna pick up some red for these bristles. And if you saw my br brushes, <laughs> they seem to be stained by with whatever color that I have used on them in the past. So maybe your bristles are all nice and pristine and all the same color, but mine definitely have history within them. So you can certainly, again, gain inspiration from your own from your own brushes. That makes it um, that makes the process fun, and it makes your painting a little bit more. Um, personal to you if you can utilize stuff within your own home or within your own studio that's going to give you that that extra special um, edge to it i think i'm going to use maybe some orange whatever color i used on that binder i just picked it up and just kind of adding this in through here and again you can make yours as you know decorative or as simple as you want I just picked up a little bit of black because that was a little a little too um, wobbly for me and then I'm just gonna pick up maybe some brown and rust 
And again, I'm just kind of adding these colors as I as I feel that I want them within that within that br brush. Um, I'm going to add a bit of um, a point. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice bristle on that one. There we go. And then I just want to finish the edge along the cup to make it look more realistic. Right now, it just kind of looks flat to me. So I just picked up a bit of black paint, and I'm going to bring this edge out just a little bit more. I want a shadow in between my brush and the edge of my cup, so I'm adding that in through there. And I'm going to bring this out just a little bit more. I'm feeling like the um, the edge of the cup was just not not totally. I wasn't sold on it, so I'm bringing it up just a little bit. I'm going to put a tiny shadow between my um, brushes in through here. And then if you wanted to, you could cast a little bit of a shadow on the back edge of the cup too. That that would work. So you can just kind of fiddle fiddle with those as much as you as much as you feel you need to. And then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your cup and your bristles and your brushes in your cup all nice and finessed, you can put this small brush away wherever you'd like to. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding the shadows on the surface, um, the table surface or the bookshelf surface of the books that are standing up, the book that's laying down, and the cup. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna be using black and brown paint and I may end up using a little bit of water also in order to keep that paint nice and fluid as I'm going through this process. Depending on how light or dark your surface is, you might be able to get away with just brown or if it's on the darker side, you'll definitely wanna use a little bit of black. So my light source is gonna be up above these books. So it's casting a shadow down, which is why we had the tops light and the bottoms dark. And I'm just gonna bring the shadow out a little bit in front of them. Underneath here, it'll be a pretty clean shadow underneath here. And then I'll have a nice shadow of this part on here. And then here I'll have it a little bit in front and maybe a little bit to the left. So I have black and brown on my brush right now at the same time. I'm just going to, in essence, kind of underline this uh, portion of the book. So this is gonna be a pretty uh, simple one. I'm gonna do it maybe about an eighth of an inch wide. And I've got a little water on my brush, which is why I'm able to do this continual line. And then as I come, around this corner in through here. I still want there to be a shadow of this part of the book, so I'm just gonna bring this out onto the table a little bit or the shelf or whatever you're gonna refer to yours as, so something like that. And then I'm gonna bring this up. I have a big shadow underneath this portion of the book, so I've got black with a little bit of brown on my brush. I'm gonna bring this all the way in through here because this all this whole underneath part of this um, book is shadowing the floor or the, the surface that it is sitting on. And I'm gonna bring it all the way over to the corner, the bottom left corner of this book like this. And you want it to make sense. So I'm gonna have it something like this. So it looks like it's that, that shadow, you know, casting this particular shadow. I want to tell the story that the light is a little over to the right, so I'm going to put a touch of a shadow coming up this corner of the book in through here. So this is going to cast a little bit of a shadow and give a bit more dimension in this corner in through there. That looks good to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the shadow along the bottom of these books in through here. So I wanna be careful not to have too much paint on my brush. So I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I'm really just gonna kind of give a, a gentle little shadow in front of each one of these, pulling it out a little bit. If you wanna give it a little bit of a curve, that's gonna tell the viewer that the front of the book has a little bit of a curve on it. Um, I, I suppose you could put a touch over here too. Maybe just, maybe just a little bit, just to, 
maybe there's a couple of lamps on in the room and they're casting different shadows. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these ones in through here. So again, I hardly have any paint on my brush and I'm just really kind of pushing it right underneath the edge of the, the book, bringing it up the little corners a bit. So I'm kind of shaping the bottoms of these books as I'm going along. And then I'll do the same thing on my, um, on my little cup in through here. And I'm gonna bring this shadow out along the left-hand side as if it is being, it's being cast upon the, the surface by whatever that light source is. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of a shadow um, up in between these books too, or in between the cup and this book here as if the cup might be or the book or something's casting a little bit of a shadow. I feel like I want a shadow in through here. So, so I'm going to put one because <laughs> I think that it somehow needs one just to give it a little bit of a dimension. There we go. That, that works for me. Maybe just a little bit more up on this side. And then we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows in place, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing our decorative elements and our words on our books. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm most likely gonna be using every single color on my palette because I'm just gonna um, just have fun with what kind of decorations and words that I'm gonna be putting on these books and they can be all the same color or all different colors so I'm just gonna have a whole lot of fun doing this. I'm gonna put words that are related to me and, in, and to my studio and to um, this whole painting experience thing that I do. So you can write words that are meaningful to you or you can use the same ones as I'm using. I will be using a lot of paint on my brush when I do these elements. Um, at times, if I'm gonna use a darker color or, you know, at times you could use water with your, um, with your paint mixture to give yourself some nice flowy lines. But once I start, I really kind of go fast. Um, so just know that if I don't say what I'm doing, I'm probably a lot of times gonna have a little bit of moisture on my brush. So I, that'll give me a nice fluid brush stroke. Um, and I'm gonna use any any color <laughs> to, to do whatever kind of effects that I would like to on this on each book so I'm just gonna start left to right a lot of my words are gonna be um, vertical which will be easy to do it this way at some point I'm probably gonna switch my turn my canvas um, 45 degrees I think is the right number so I can write the other words the horizontal words so we'll get to I'll probably do that as the last thing so I'm going to start with this book over here and I'm going to just use maybe a little bit of white and I'm going to write the word landscape down this book and of course you can certainly again write whatever words you want um, I typically I'm going to do like a block type um, style letter because that's where my hand is comfortable. But you could certainly use fancy script. You can like I can go into some black paint right now and make almost like a little bit of a three dimensional look to these if I want to bring down a little bit of that black on the left hand side and that's making these letters almost pop out. Maybe the next one I'm washing and drying my brush. I, I'm probably going to do that in between everyone as well. So I just washed and dried my brush and maybe on this one I'm going to do I don't know, maybe a little bit of white with that yellow and give myself some cool um, little sections of the binder that poke out. Maybe I'll pick up a touch of black to get those to look a little bit more dimensional. Then maybe I'll pick up a little bit of red and maybe this is gonna say life. Let's see, we're gonna go life, life, and what do we got here? Life and let's put the word art. Life and art, because that's, that's what my life is. It is art. 
There we go. Then maybe I'm gonna skip this this one because that's actually let me put a little couple of decorative elements on the top. So I've got uh, green and black on my brush. Just gonna give a couple of little decorative elements on this. I'm gonna write a word on this one, but it's gonna be um, in the in the opposite way. It's gonna run down the other way. I think maybe I'm gonna skip this one and maybe I'll write a word here, but it's gonna go in the other direction. I'm gonna go over to here. This one is gonna say, let's see, what's this one's gonna say? I think this one is gonna say, so I have black, white, and blue on my brush right now. I think I'm gonna do some little dots up at the top and, you know, decorate your book whatever way you want. This one is gonna say power, power of, and again, use whatever words you want of. You guys probably can figure out what the next word is going to be. This one's going to be the power of paint. The power of paint is a very strong in my little world. And then I'm going to just put some more white paint on my brush and maybe, maybe we'll do something that looks like it's dripping. I don't know, some little, almost like little dots of sorts. And again, decorate these books whatever way you want. Maybe I've got a little extra white. Eh, I liked it better, bad black. You can certainly, well, now I've got to put this P nice and bright. There we go. Just make it whatever way it makes your painterly eye happy. With a couple of little light dots up there. There we go. Power, power of paint. Look it, now it says pop. Hmm, I like that. It's the power of pop paint. All right, let's see what else we're gonna do. I'm gonna skip this one. I think I'm gonna put this one over here is just gonna say the word. I think this one's just gonna say color. Let's just go with a big C-O-L-O-R. So <laughs> I've done lots of classes where people are writing words. And the biggest tip that I can give you on this is Make sure you spell your words correctly. <laughs> I had, uh, I, it was such a funny, but not funny story. I had these, this whole class, there was like 50 or 60 people and they were painting these beautiful signs for their house and they were doing their last names. And then all of a sudden the whole class was over and the mom said, or the daughter says to the mom, um, do you know that you spelled our last name wrong? <laughs> So she was beside herself. She was so upset. She, you know, she ended up correcting it. I didn't want her to. I thought it was, I thought it was very endearing and cute and she didn't, she didn't find it cute at all. So just make sure you spell your words correctly. Um, otherwise you will live, live with it for the rest of your, you know, the rest of the time that you're looking at these and, uh, Re perhaps regret it. Um, so I'm just adding these neat little things on the edge of that book and maybe this one is gonna, I don't know, say, let's see, how about this one is gonna say paint, hold on, let me just make, make sure my brush is correct, paint, P-A-I-N-T, my world, because I need to paint my world, R L D. Of course, that little got a little smushed in through there. And then let's do another one this way. Let's call this one. Um, we're going to call this one, I think, abstract. So you can see I'm just kind of pulling whatever color I want. I've got a lot of white ones. This one I'm going to have. Uh, I'm using that little bit of yellow paint. And of course, you can make yours whatever color you want. You can have them writing much more fun words or whatever words that bring happiness to your world. And then I think I'm gonna turn, I'm ready to turn it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this this way so I can write some, some words in the other way. I think my first one that I'm gonna do is in through here and I'm gonna write the word impressionism, but I'm gonna do it with dots, or at least some of the letters. So maybe I'll just do the I and the M. I am, make sure I give myself enough room. So you could certainly write each word in as fun of a way as you want. Now let's just make sure I can spell it correctly. Impress, you would think that I would have um, 
pre-done this or had a little cheat sheet right next to me so I didn't misspell any of these words, but we'll, we'll hope that I, I do it right. Impressionism. I think I got it. I think I did it. There we go. And then let's see what other words. Oh, let's go for some cubism too. So I think, oh, I liked that yellow. So let's use a little bit of yellow and we'll do cubism here. And of course you could put, I almost, um, one of my favorite artists is Norman Rockwell. And I'm like, oh, I should just write all these names of famous artists that I, that, you know, have given me some kind of inspiration throughout my throughout my world or throughout my painting, you know, life. And then I started realizing how long some of their names were. And I said, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna just leave it as, as this. So I think I'm gonna put one more in through here. This one's gonna be called, let's call this one Perfect Portraits, which there never is such a thing as a perfect portrait, but we all strive to um, for perfection when we're doing portraits because the person who we're doing them of or the animal that we're doing them of always seems to want them perfect, like like a photograph. So, so we definitely have to do our research on how to do perfect portraits. <laughs> so let's see if I can get this word in here. P O R T. So you get in a spelling lesson as well. Hopefully, I've spelled all of my words correctly. And then let's see. How about some? Let's do some modern art. Let's put this one in, oh, what color? Oh, let's do this one in blue. So we're gonna do some modern art here. And it's funny because I do a, um, a sample painting for each one of these ones that you guys see on, on camera. And I spelled this one wrong. <laughs> so I've gotta completely concentrate and make sure that I don't spell this one wrong. I missed the N at the end of it when I was doing it earlier, but I I always end up changing them when I'm doing them on camera too. So we'll see if I can get this, this right. There we go. As long as I have enough room. There we go. And then I think I just have one more. Mm, do I even want that one over there? Let's see. I, I think, I think, ah, I think I just want some um, let's see. Oh, th I think I'm going to put this one is going to say therapy because therapy is what art began for me. So we're going to go therapy in through here. T H E fair. Uh oh. Fair. Um, fair. Rupi. <laughs> I think there might be a, an O in there. I will. I'm going to have to correct that one later. Mm -hmm. I think. There, I think there's an O in there somewhere, but we're gonna we're gonna run with it here. And you know, of course, you can put as many more words in here as you want to, um, but that's that's gonna be as many as I'm gonna put because, you know, I have a feeling I'm gonna start spelling them wrong. <laughs> so we're gonna have one more step, which will be done with the small brush. So once you've got all of your beautiful words on there, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush in black paint and I'm signing mine in the bottom left. I'm signing mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date. I suppose you could have even signed it in one of the book bindings if you wanted to or on the page in the book. Um, so you could certainly get creative with this. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you painted yourself a very personal image of some books. I hope you enjoyed the process. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>